this is third time lucky. I have just been rambling this morning trying to get on a podcast and trying to get my words out. Um, it's been hectic. I haven't recorded a podcast in about, what, three weeks because of just moving and stuff like that. Obviously, you've been listening to podcasts because I've got ahead of time and, you know, I do not want to, I want to be consistent. I don't want to miss a week with you guys, so I've been recording them ahead of time. But just with the move and a lot of stuff going on, I haven't actually had time to record a podcast. So trying this morning, like this is my third attempt and I'm like, just get the fucking words out. Come on, let's get it done. Usually I'm like, one take, get it done. And But I've just been rambling at the start and I'm like, you know what, this isn't even making sense. So I have moved house. I have moved further out of Sydney. I have moved to a bigger place. I now have a room with a window in it. It's not even a window, um, a glass door that I can walk outside to the backyard with. And it's funny because like little things do a lot for your mental health that you don't think about. And it wasn't until I moved out of Newtown and I'm like, holy shit, like there's space, there's nature, there's natural light. There's a lot more going on out here and it's an instant uplift in my uh, mental health. So that's been good. But in regards to that, I do want to talk about, um, not so much about moving, but your environment in general and how your environment plays such a big role. I have talked about this before, but I want to reiterate this because I've noticed this just moving into my new place, how certain habits have now become easier for me and how I've set that up with my environment, all right? So a lot of people, you know, when it comes to trying to change habits, we always try and think about what we can do, what can I control, what can I change, what can I, you know, what can I physically do? And that is one proponent, I guess you would say, of changing habits that, you know, you physically do something. But another thing you can do is to set your environment up to actually shape your habits and behaviors. And when you're going to a different environment, you can change those habits and behaviors. If there's habits you want to get rid of and want to stop, et cetera, et cetera, you can make these adjustments, which is kind of cool at the end of the day. Like it's actually very weird how the body works or how the brain works, I guess you would say, in regards to habit change based on the environment you're in, okay? So I want to give an example. When I moved to this place, I told myself that I'm not going to smoke pot when I move here. I'm like, I'm in a new environment. I do not want to smoke here. Um... It's just something I've been trying to, like, again, you guys have heard me talk about this before. I've been trying to give it up. I've gone on and off it, but I'm like, new place, do not want to smoke it, right? Not to say that I'm not going to have it, because again, this is for me, this is habit. Some of you like to drink, I don't drink. For me, I like to get high sometimes. So that is having an edible, all right? So I said to myself, I will not smoke pot in this house. Since moving here, I have not even had an urge to want to smoke, weirdly enough. And it's just because now my environment is set up differently. Where I was at home, the bong was next to my bed, right? Now there's no bong. So just that simple change of not having to rely on willpower every night saying, oh, I'm not gonna have it. It's just not there, it's just not temptation. So that simple change in environment of removing something from my environment and changing my whole house environment has made that difference. Another thing I've been trying to do well with is my skincare routine. I know, skincare, right? Fucking a male taking this into consideration. I want to have naturally glowing skin. So I've just been like, you know what? I need to put some moisturizer on my face. And back in the old place, we used to have cabinets in the bedroom, in the bedroom, in the bathroom. You know, like you'd have your mirror and then you'd have all the stuff behind it. And some days I would just forget, like simply just opening the the cabinet to reach in and grab the stuff and use it, it's just been so forgetful for me. So like some days I do it, some days I wouldn't. And it's just like, it's like I wanted to do every day, but I just forget about it, like fuck. But now this new place that we're in, the bathroom, uh, it doesn't have any cabinet windows. So instead I went and brought a, uh, like a shelving unit from Ikea where everything is on display. And every day, or nearly every day, I should say, my adherence to putting on my moisturizer, which is also a sunscreen, and putting on sunscreen on my body in general, has, the consistency is way more, like way higher. I'm doing it probably, what, six out of seven days, whereas I might've been doing it three to four out of seven days before, just because it's visually next to my bathroom sink, right? Like, the shelf is open, open shelf. I can see everything on there. So for me, I'm like, oh yeah, I need to do this. And like putting beard oil in my beard because I need to keep it, uh, I was going to say lubricated. What's the word? Not dry. What's it? Moist, I guess you would say. I don't know. Um, shiny. Not dry. I don't know what the fucking word is. But like now I've got beard oil um, and I just use that every day because it's there. And just simply because it's in front of my eyes and I can see it, it's an instant reminder. 
And it's so crazy because it's like literally by changing your environment, you can make things so much easier for you to stick to. Like if you want to eat more fruit, for example, and you, instead of putting the fruit in the the fruit drawer, what are they called? What are the drawers called in the fridge? It's not just a fruit or vegetable drawer, is it? I think there's another word for it. But instead of putting it there, maybe you leave it on your coffee table in the lounge room where you're sitting a majority of the time. Maybe you leave them on the kitchen bench. Like, yeah, it may look a little bit messy, but that's going to be like a visual, like, oh, yeah, I need to eat some fruit today, you know? So that's one way that if you wanted to eat more fruit, if you wanted to eat more veggies, maybe what you do is you bring all your vegetables, if you do pre-cook them, uh, pre-cut and cook them or whatever you do, bring the stuff to like eye level, okay? Like the, the, sh the shopping centers are very, very good at this for making you want to, uh, like people are lazy, okay? People don't want to lean down to the bottom aisle. This is actually bizarre. You can literally see this. The most expensive stuff is at eye level because people just look straight ahead. Oh yeah, I see that, I grab it. You want convenience. A lot of people don't want to be in the supermarket looking like that. People aren't like me. I'm in the supermarket. I will look like, you know, oh yeah, have a look at this. Have a look at this. Uh, like what's these calories like? What's this, you know, what's per hundred grams? Oh yeah, is this cheaper per hundred grams? I'll do my little research. A lot of people don't. They want the convenience factor. And so anything that's eye level that is usually the most expensive will be grabbed straight away. Okay. The supermarkets know this psychology. And for you, being able to take this, uh, what I've been explaining to you so far in regards to setting your environment of success and getting things that you can visually see if you want to do something that requires uh, a visual aid is gonna help. So again, let's say for you, you wanted to wear more sunscreen, leave it out where you're gonna see it every day, okay? If you wanna eat more fruit, put fruit on the bench or the coffee table or wherever it needs to be kept that you can see it all the time. If you keep forgetting to eat your vegetables and end up going off, bring them to the front of the fridge because usually, again, you'll either have them in the drawer or you'll have them packed away somewhere at the back of the fridge where you don't see it until it's too late. And simply by changing these little environments, you can make a really, really good change with habits, all right? Just by like, again, just by not even having to physically do anything extra or require any more extra cognitive capability. And if it doesn't require extra cognitive capability, it's easier for you to stick to, okay? One other good thing that funnily enough, I've been able to save money on is take away coffee. Just because where I am now, coffee shops aren't open as in the morning, uh, as aren't open as early in the morning, I should say. And they also just, look, it's just not as good. Newtown fucking, Newtown coffee is cracker. You know, people know how to be baristas there. Here, it's like an industrial area a little bit more. People just get up grabbing the coffee. They don't care what it tastes like. So by nature, by na not by nature. What's the word I'm trying to say? Um, I don't know. Whatever the thing is. Because of that, I now have to make my coffee at home, which means I am also saving coffee. Uh, sorry, which means I'm also saving money on coffee. I'm saving like 14 bucks a day because I have like two coffees and they're like fucking six dollars, six to seven dollars at the moment. So being able to save money on coffee has been another you know benefit just because of the area I'm in. These are things you need to take into consideration. And like again, I'm not saying all right, well everyone needs to move house because obviously you can't. But can you shape certain rooms in your house to be better environments to set you up for success? Right, maybe you put a walking pad. So I had a client, she's been trying to get more steps in. She brought a walking pad. She put the walking pad in her lounge room in front of the TV. So at the end of the day, when she's like, all right, I need to go for a walk, it's already there. It's already set up. She doesn't need to go, I've got to drag the walking pad out of the other room or from under the couch, wherever it's going to be. I've got to set it up. I've got to do this. It's just stuck in the middle of the room. So as soon as it's there, it's set up, ready to go. That might be something you need to do, you know? Maybe the night before, this is a good one, uh, the night before, you pack all the food that you have to take for the day. Because, it, you know, we all have good intentions before going to bed. It's always like, uh, we'll, uh, like you know, we have motivation in the morning, we feel good, we're excited, we're like, yes, I'm going to crush the day. Usually it's not as soon as you wake up. Usually it's after you have your first coffee and stuff like, yeah, I feel good. And then by towards the end of the day, like you just start to, you're not as excited. You know, you're like, oh, whatever. Oh, am I going to stick to this? Can I be bothered? It's like your motivation is just like slowly drained. But then at nighttime, before you go to bed, you kind of get this like, uh, ex not excitement for tomorrow, optimism for tomorrow. Like tomorrow I'm going to do this, this, and this. Tomorrow I'm going to get up early. Tomorrow I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. So if they are your intentions, like, you know, if tomorrow you want to do X, Y, Z, 
use this to your advantage and do the things that need to set you up for the morning. So let's say, for example, you want to go to the gym, okay? So you put the phone on the other side of the room. Why do you put the phone on the other side of the room? Because then you have to get out of bed. You already have your gym stuff packed. You want to eat healthy tomorrow, you already make sure that your ready-made meals and or whatever you've got are ready to go, okay? You control the environment. That way, you don't have to rely on your willpower as soon as you wake up in the morning. We're like, oh, I just can't be bothered to go. Like, it's all set up there, okay? And these little things that you can do when you have those high levels of motivation. So when you have the high levels of motivation, instead of like doing the thing, you're like, yes, I'm going to go and do this. Maybe think about how can I set up this environment to set me up for success, okay? Because if I have high motivation and I go to the gym today, that's great, sweet, I went to the gym. But how do I then replicate that in the future that I want to keep doing that? You know, if you want to go for a morning walk every morning, let's say, maybe again, instead of uh, maybe you do walk to your favorite coffee shop and you're like, you know what, if I want to get a coffee, I'm going to walk to my favorite coffee shop. So the incentive to walk is there. The incentive uh, the incentive is having a good coffee and you're going to walk home, you know? When it comes to working out, maybe like when I say environment, putting on some music that's obviously going to motivate you. And if there's certain music you listen to only in the gym, start listening to that just before you go into the gym. Get your body in the right frame of mind or your mind in the right frame of mind, I should say. It's actually so weird how these things work. And it doesn't mean it's going to work all the time. But these are things that are going to set you up for success in the long run. Like for me, I've been dieting pretty consistently over the last month, I guess I would say. And another thing that's set me up is because when I moved to this place, I don't think I've done, I'm like, I'm not just, I'm just not buying shit food in the house. You know, I'm not bringing it in. There was a lot of stuff that was still left over from the old place. So I just left it. I was like, whatever, I don't need that at the moment. I'm just going to leave it. And then, um, so I like, you know, threw it out. And now here, there's nothing here that I can have right? So all these little things can really set you off success down the, down, the, like, down the success path, I guess you would say, by just making some small adjustments. And it doesn't have to be anything crazy, you know? You just got to think about, and it's, it's hard to think about your environment when, you, when you're not used to thinking about it. So when I say you've just got to think about it, take five minutes in the room you're in right now if you're listening or you're outside or wherever you are, if you're in the car, if you're in work, whatever you're doing, take five minutes to think about, okay, what around here could I change that would make it easier for me to, whatever that's going to be, that would make it easier for me to go for a walk, that would make it easier for me to stick to my diet, that would make it easier for me to go to the gym, that would make it easier for me to go to bed earlier, that would make it easier for me to get up out of bed instead of lying in bed, that would make it easier for me to like, you know, there's, there's fucking heaps of things that you can do. You just got to think about what is that going to be, okay? And there's no right or wrong answer. There's going to be trial and failure, you know, right? There's not going to be like, oh, well, I did this and everything set up success. You got to try shit. But the thing you keep doing is trying to rely on your willpower and basically just trying to force yourself to be like, I've got to do this. You know, I'm going to do this. And it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. There is a reason people are more successful exercising in a gym than they are at home in their living room. Again, this is not walking on the treadmill. This is just gym in general. Like, you, when you go to the gym, you're in a state of mind. You're like, okay, I'm here to work out. Everyone else is working out here. Everyone else is pushing it. It puts you in a frame of mind, you know? When I go to boxing, I'm not going to be like, oh, I don't feel like boxing tonight. Because everyone else who is there is G'd up and ready to box. And it just puts me in a mood. I'm in a fucking boxing gym. Okay, when I go to work, surprise, surprise, it's not like I'm excited to work. But if I'm at work, I'm working, you know? And when I say work, like I'm in the kitchen. When I'm in the kitchen, I'm not like, oh, well, I'm just going to watch the other boys, you know, cook cook today. I'm just going to do nothing. They're going to be like, what are you doing? Like, why are you not doing anything? Firstly, secondly, just by nature, because the other boys are doing the cooking and moving. And if they're excited and they've got energy, it rubs off on me. So that another way that your environment can set you up for success is doing things with people that, or having accountability, okay? So like someone who is like, if you if you if you have a, a gym partner, I guess you would say, if they text you and they're like, "Get your, where are you? You're not at the fucking gym." Like you're gonna feel like shit, and you're probably gonna go. If you're someone like me who likes the group classes, who likes the social aspect, people are gonna be like, "Where are you?" Or again, you might just go because the environment there is so good and so energizing and a good community that you're like, "I just want to go because I like the people there." And by nature, you end up exercising, right? Uh, we've actually started doing, um, me and the two boys who run the meal prep company, Mac and Alex, we started to do the, um, uh, if you guys have heard of the yard, they've got like a yard thing on Saturdays. All three of us do it because it's a good environment. It's a good sweat session. I get to train with my mates in a nice, clean, new kitted out gym. 
and it's a good way to start a Saturday. Like I get to socialize, I get to have a workout, it's fun, it's in a nice place, all right? Same thing as like, there's reasons that you go out and drink. It's fun, it's with people you like usually. Um, they're probably the two things, like it's fun with people you like. So if you like to you know, obviously go out and drink and do that, look at other areas in your life that you can make fun and enjoyable and exciting to do. You wanna go for a walk and you hate going for walks? Go for a walk where there's nature, right? There's a reason I won't run on a fucking treadmill. It is boring. Boring as batshit. But on the other hand, if I want to run outside, why do I want to run outside? Why am I able to stick to running outside? Nature, it's more enjoyable. I just get to see more stuff and I'm actually moving, you know? Like I like to move. I like to be mentally stimulated when I'm running. Like I would, there is no chance I could run more than fucking 5Ks. And like, we when I'm running 5Ks, even the assault bike now, I realize, the assault bike is not as enjoyable. Actually, sorry, I should change that. The assault bike is, I can't do the assault bike every day because it becomes more and more monotonous because I'm just sitting on a bike not going anywhere. Whereas if I'm running, if I'm doing cardio somewhere else, or again, if I'm doing the, the, the Saturday session, the sessions go quicker because I'm changing environment in a way. You know, obviously in the gym, it's not like a full change environment, but I'm doing this thing, this thing, this thing, this thing. Like it's one thing to another, to another, to another. Running, when I'm doing running, same thing. It's like this area to this area, to this area, to this area. Cycling, when I'm cycling, the same thing. It's like here to here to here to here. And then I have to navigate my way through. I'm, I'm using my brain. When you're sitting on the assault, when I'm sitting on the assault bike, it's kind of just like, it's nothing, you know? That's why I'll study or this, like I can't even listen to a podcast because I can't just sit there and, and stare off uh, blindly and do nothing. Like, you know, I still have to give it some effort. Whereas like on a stationary cycle bike, I could do that because I would just watch TV and stationary cycle, you know, or I would watch something and stationary cycle. Whereas in the assault bike, it's just kind of like, for me, I've just realized, I'm like, okay, this actually isn't enjoyable as it used to be. And also that is okay. That like the something that was working for me before isn't working anymore. And now I have to change my environment again. So like, what am I going to do to change my environment? Well, again, I will start running more. I am doing group activities. I am going to obviously get, either get a stationary bike or I'm going to get a, um, uh, an actual road bike, but like that's something to also change my environment. You know, the environment at, uh, is not enjoyable when I sit in the backyard looking at a, um, a color bond fence, you know, it's just not as enjoyable. So these are things where things like, these are things that we have to pick up on and think about like, you know, why am I not motivated to do this? Think about what are the external things around, right? So I feel like I'm not motivated to go to the gym. Okay. You're not motivated to go to the gym because you don't want to work out. Or is it maybe the gym that you go to just isn't that good? It's pretty shit. You don't like going there. The environment's fucking dull. You got no one to talk to. You don't like people there. You don't like the style of training you're doing. All of these things come into play, you know? The same thing with dieting. People are like, oh, you know, I just don't want to diet anymore. Is it because your diet is boring? Is it because that you're eating the same shit? Maybe you needed to change up a recipe. Is it because you've just made it so fucking monotonous and you think that you have to eat the same shit every day that you don't enjoy? Whereas me, I can eat the same stuff every day and it's enjoyable that you just don't want to do it anymore. So think about these external factors that could be playing into your motivation and how you can change these environments to set you up for success. Because I'm telling you right now, if you start to think about this stuff and you start to make an adjustments, it's going to make life a lot easier for you. Because when our env environment is shaped for our success, we can just follow along blindly on those days we don't feel like it, on the days we're not thinking about it, on the days we have no motivation, on the days we just feel tired. Like your environment's already there and you're just doing stuff, you know? Like you think about how you get from point A to point B if you do drive to work, you don't even think about it. Your environment, it's just like you know where to go, you know the road, everything like that. And it's just non-thinking, right? So that is the podcast. I want you guys to think about the environment. I want you to think about how you can make an adjustment. That was actually perfect timing because you can probably hear the lawnmower in the background now just starting up. So I think I have timed this perfectly. If you guys enjoyed this episode, as always, I would appreciate if you can give it a share on Instagram, give me a tag. And until next time, my friends, I will speak to you then.